Now, while WordPress is a really good platform for building websites, it does have a couple of shortcomings. One of those is if we want to integrate it with various different tools, it's not the easiest thing to work on. However, we do have a range of different tools that make the whole process easy. And today we're going to be taking a look at a couple of those. So let me just paint you a simple picture. You've got a website you want to take bookings on. So we're going to use a plugin to do that. And then when you actually take a booking, you want to create a new user, assign them a specific role. You also want to connect things up to a Google spreadsheet and add data in there so you can process that externally. And if you wanted to do more steps, you could do all that. So let me show you how we can do that using a couple of different tools in WordPress. So now we've discussed what we're going to do. Let's take a look at the tools we need to do it and then start building it. So first of all, we need some way of taking bookings. And for that, we're going to be using Amelia, a WordPress plugin that's over currently on AppSumo on a lifetime deal, at least for the next couple of days. So you may want to grab this if you don't already have it, or you can use any other kind of tool. Next up, we're going to be using Flowmatic. Now, Flowmatic allows us to create automations and connect all these different things up. Very similar fashion to things like Zapier or Pabli Connect. However, this operates directly inside WordPress itself and is not an external service. Once we've got that set up, we're going to go ahead and jump over into the dashboard. So this is where we can start to build things and test things out. So first of all, we need to make sure that we've got a booking thing set up. So Amelia is already set up and I've created a really simple setup inside there to allow us to take bookings. With that being done, we need to start integrating these together. So we're going to be using Flowmatic. We're going to come over into the integrations. Inside the integrations, this shows us all of the different integrations we have, whether they're internal options inside WordPress itself. But we're going to leave those in this example, and we're going to make sure that we've got the tools that we want connected up. So first of all, we need to make sure we've got Google Sheets installed, which we do. We also need to make sure we've got Amelia installed, which I do, and any other tools we want. Once you've done that, we can hop over into the workflow section. And inside there, we can start to build out our workflows. Now, this might sound complicated, but it's actually very, very simple. Let's go and select new workflow. We'll give this a name. We'll just call this new booking. Once we've given it a name, the next thing we need to do is set the trigger. Now, let me just quickly explain how these automations work, no matter what kind of tool you're using, whether it's WordPress based or external. Everything is based upon triggers and actions. If you have a trigger, it'll trigger the action. Simple as that. So we choose the trigger. So for this example, we're going to use WP Amelia. We're going to select that and it says choose an event. So in other words, what do we want to actually cause the trigger? If we click and open that up, you can see all the different options we have inside you. So if you set in appointments or you set in events, which are basically the two kinds of things you can have using Amelia, you can then say, is this when it's completed, rescheduled, canceled, or the status is changed. So you can have multiple different kind of workflow set up for all different kinds of scenarios. For this one, we're going to say when there's a new appointment is being booked, we want it to do something. Now, underneath, it tells us we need to go through a couple of different steps to connect the Flowmatic workflow up to our Amelia setup. Now, there's a nice set of options here. So what we need to do is we're going to copy this. And you can see if we hop over into Amelia and come into Settings, so I'll open that in a new tab, jump over in there and open up our integrations, open up webhooks, add a new webhook. We're going to give this a name, so we'll call this Flowmatic the URL is basically what we have here. So we're going to simply copy that, paste that inside there, set the type of this example to be an appointment, and set the action to be booking completed. So all these instructions are basically here telling you exactly what needs to be done. Once you've done that, we'll click on Save and Save, and that's that side of things set up. So all we need to do now is come back into our workflow. We're going to say Capture the Webhook. Now, what this means we need to do is we need to trigger this and then go and make a test appointment, a test booking, just to kind of get the whole process to trigger so we can capture some live data. Now, don't worry, this isn't complicated, and this is the same no matter what kind of automation tools you're actually going to be using. So what we're going to do is we're going to say capture webhook. We're going to hop over into our test page, scroll down to our booking, and we're just going to simply go ahead and make a test booking. So we've now created a test kind of booking. Now if we hop back over into our workflows, you can see that's now gone ahead and captured all of the data that's been passed over as part of that booking. So all the data is available to us now to use inside the actions we want to be triggered. I hope that makes sense. So let's just close that down. So now we've already gone ahead and completed the trigger. So now we need to say, once this is triggered, 
what we wanted to do. So we said we wanted to create a new user inside WordPress. So let's click on the plus, and you can see this is now what action, so the trigger and the action. We're going to choose the application, and we're going to say, for this example, we want WordPress. You can then choose the action event. In other words, what happens when the trigger is triggered? We're going to say new user. We can say that we've got username, email, first name, and so on. So where do we get this information from? Well, this is what comes from the captured data in the previous step. So what we need to do is come over to username. We'll click on the little database icon, and it says select data to map. And underneath, you can see we've got WP Amelia appointment booking completed. So if we click to expand that, there's all of the data that the trigger has triggered and sent over via the Amelia booking. And this is the reason why you need to run that test, first of all. So all we need to do is go ahead and grab the username. So if we scroll down for this, we're going to use the email. So if I just type in email, that will filter things down. I can see booking customers email, we'll select that. We'll do the same again now for the actual email. So we'll click, we'll just type in email one more time. We'll choose the booking for the customer's email. And we'll do the same thing then for the first name and the last name. So again, we'll select, open that up, name. You can see we don't want the provider. We want to make sure we choose the bookings info array, the first name. Otherwise, we just transfer over the information of the actual kind of account holder. So we'll choose that from there. We'll do the same thing again now for the last name. So we'll just click do name one more time, and we'll say the last name. And finally, we've got the password. And you can see this gives us an option to say generate the password automatically. So we'll just say to do that, and that will send an email over now as part of the sign-up process for WordPress, and the new user can create their own password should they want to. Next up, we've got the user role. So what we can do is we can click on here, and we can choose the WordPress user roles. And inside there, we've got all of the different user roles, and you'll see that Amelia creates a couple of new custom uh, user roles. So what we need to do is choose this to be Amelia customer, and that side of things is done. Now, finally, we can say, do we want to send a notification email? Who do we want to send it to? The admin, the user, both or no one. So for this example, we'll say both. So that when a booking is made, there will be a notification email sent to both the user who signed up through the booking and also the admin of the website. And you can also, if you want to, enable conditions for execution. So if you only want this to actually be run at certain times when certain conditions are met, you can enable this. And then you can check things like you can check field data, you can choose the condition, and you can select the value. And you can build up more complex conditions using the and or operator. For this example, we're not going to do that. I'm going to say save and test action. You can see that now tells us that successfully set things up. And as you can see, we've got the status, is success, and the user ID. So that's the first part of this done. Now, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and have this connect up to our database inside Google. So if we take a look, I've created a new database called Appointments. And inside there, we've got some basic data, forename, surname, appointment, and the email address of the booker. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop back over into our workflows. We're going to add another action in. We're going to scroll. And we're going to just go ahead and we're going to grab that Google Spreadsheets. So once we've done that, it says choose an action event. So we'll say we want to add a new row. But again, you can see there's a multitude of different options. Say add new. You're going to need to sign in with Google the first time just to connect everything up. You can choose the account you want and then click on continue. And then that's now connected everything up to Google. So we can go ahead now. We can refresh this to make sure we've got all the data ready and fresh. And then we can do is we can go and grab that spreadsheet ID. So you can see we've got the Google Spreadsheets Live Sync. We'll click on there. There's any of the spreadsheets you've got inside our account. So any of our Google Sheets, we'll choose the appointments one in this example. And then we just choose the sheet. So we'll click on consultation. So if I just jump back over, you can see this is the appointments. And then we've got a sheet down at the bottom called consultations. So if you had multiple sheets inside you, you can choose what this connects up to. And like we saw previously, now we just need to go ahead and map the data. And if we hit the save and test action, this is going to use that data that we triggered right at the beginning and transfer this over just to check everything works. So you can see that's now successfully connected up. All the results are displayed underneath. And if we take a look at our Google Sheet, you can see there's the data transferred over into our Google Sheet from WordPress. So now what we need to do is come back over to this. We'll hit this and set this into be live and say save workflow. 
So that basically has now set everything up for our three-step process. So when someone creates a booking, it'll now add them to the WordPress site, give them a username and all those kinds of things. It'll also add them to the Amelia database and everything else goes with that. So your appointment is stored there as well. And it'll create an entry inside your Google spreadsheet. Pretty cool. So let's go ahead and test it out. We'll refresh just to make sure everything is all up to date and working perfectly. And let's go ahead and create a new entry. So we'll say this is for the 31st. We'll set the time we want. We'll hit continue. No, this isn't repeating. I'll insert my information and we'll click on continue. We'll confirm and we'll say finish. So now everything has gone through as we would expect it to. So if we now jump over into, first of all, the Google Sheets, there's our new user. If we hop over into our WordPress website and come over into our users and all users, you can see there's our new user with the name and everything else transferred over, an Amelia customer. And if we take a look inside Amelia itself and we've got appointments, any or all of the appointments are set up inside there, the consultations, who it's with and all those kinds of things. So this is how we can create a much more powerful setup connecting various different external components using some simple tools like Flowmatic, Amelia in this example for the book inside of things, Google, all those kinds of things. And there's so many different ways in which you can use this. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to working with automations inside WordPress. Now, if you'd like me to show you exactly how I've set things up for some of my sales funnels and so on, all the different tools I've used and how I connect everything up together, let me know in the comment section down below. As always, all the applicable links are in the description. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.